Brrr. A little chilly here in the birthplace of uh, American barbecue. We uh, actually give you a little something to pucker up to with just uh, our secret ingredient this week and a couple of surprises. Fire it up. <laughs> American Barbecue, the low country of South Carolina. It's great TV. Jack Waybor, he's the three-time South Carolina state champion. Jack at greattv.com. That's me. I'm Bill West with uh, barbecuetricks.com and uh, Bill at greattv.com. Getting right into your questions, your uh, letters, your great plate photos. And it starts with a little note. It starts from... with beer. Oh, yes. We, we don't we start without beer. shark. Because last show we did, we didn't have beer. I can't believe it. Where are the handlers at? We need them. Uh, anyway, it's good to see you, Bill. It's cold in uh, South Carolina today. So. Winter time cooking. Well, we're not really winter because, <laughs> quite frankly, we live in a great place for not winter. But it's a little chilly. But uh, I'm good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Great plate. Uh, great uh, letter from Brian Hewitt. Hey guys, I never thought I'd have to ask this question, but our local giant eagle will not be custom slicing a ham anymore because of safety reasons. They say uh, they will cut a whole ham in half, but will not slice off ham steaks. Is there a small handheld meat saw that you recommend? This is your area. Me, Thanks, that's me. Yep. Brian Hewitt. What do you say? Well, I think that uh, this is a good opportunity for A, to really consider where you're doing your shopping because, you know, um, a butcher should be able to cut ham steaks off of a, off of a ham. That being said, I understand that, uh, you know, a lot of places are, are cutting back and, and they're trying to save a little bit of money. And meat cutting is a skilled trade. So maybe in the evening time, they wouldn't have anybody there that would be able to do that for you. So, yes, there are meat saws available, and there are a couple of different options. Um, you can buy a regular hacksaw, which is certainly okay, but make sure that you clean it up real good first. Buy it new. Don't use the ones you've had in your garage forever. Buy it new and dedicate it to only food handling. Hmm. Um, it, it, the hacksaw is, is when if you were to buy a meat saw and look at it, you would see that it is very similar to a hacksaw. So meat saws are available. My favorite place to buy a meat saw would probably be Northern Tool. Um, they have a lot of them on there. So I'm sure we could uh, get a link posted up to Northern Tool and which ones they have. I think they have the large one and the small one. And if you really want to get into the deluxe models, go to a place called Allied Kenco. They really have uh, um, a wide variety and a wide range of things. Um, use a knife to cut the meat first to the distance that you, you know, to the width that you want to cut it. So cut your slices and then you go ahead and use the saw to cut through the bone. And then go ahead and use your knife to cut the rest of the way. You don't want to be, you don't want to be sawing meat is what I'm saying. Okay. The only thing you want to saw is the bone part. And the bone really isn't that big. You know, on a ham of bone is, I don't know, an inch, yeah. inch, inch and a half in diameter. It's not really all that big of a deal. You, and you can cut your ham steaks that way and it's certainly, uh, you know, it's certainly a good deal. Cheapest way, go buy yourself a hacksaw. I think uh, the ones at uh, Northern Tool, maybe 20 bucks. I don't know. Something like that. Probably, yeah, cheaper than the food specials. Yeah. All right, speaking of uh, things like gadgets and, and things like that, that, that would have worked, but I got this for Christmas, so I figured I'd I, share. You did it well at Christmas, didn't you? V-shaped smoker box. And last week we talked about the uh, world market. This right. is uh, This is the same place. And yeah, look at that. That's just, nice. I mean, we've talked about smoker boxes before, but this is kind of cool because it's triangular. triangular. And actually, this is what I would need for most gas grills. They've got right. those covers. And uh, you plug it in there, put yeah, your uh, wood chips. I've got some of the uh, Jack Daniels chips over oh, there. I see right. over can, there. But uh, put your wood chips in there and it makes it, it look like a, makes it kind of a boxy kind of thing. Actually, I like these whiskey barrel chips. Yeah, and uh, you know if you if you uh, if you have a problem with chips, uh, oh boy, I'm getting them all over the place. If you have a problem with chips uh, and don't have availability to this kind of thing, and they are pretty much available anywhere, uh, pellets work real good in these things too. Oh, that's good. Uh, the the uh, barbecue or the light pellets or whatever pellets you can get a hold of, good stuff there too. Well, let's take a look while we set up our uh, secret ingredient this week. I'll get you a, a couple of great plate photos. This is where you send us the pictures at. 
GreatTV.com. Just use the simple little upload shot. There, there. you go. First one coming from Ainsley uh, from Somerset, New Jersey. Smoking chicken with cherry wood. Oh, that looks good. 32 it? degrees out there. Woo. Man, it's uh, going to be using cold. Using this Weber Smoky Mountain 22 and a half inch bullet smoker. That, that, they fit right on there, too. Look at that. Look at those chickens. Those look wonderful. Next up, coming from Larry Savage out in Arkansas. I love that these are coming from all over the place. Yeah, it is neat. Love getting your great plates. Uh, he says, enjoy the show. These are my bacon wrapped jalapenos. Whoa, we just made bacon wrapped jalapenos, yeah. or we made jalapenos on the last show. Stuff with cre he's cream cheese and Creole seasoning. How that sounds really good. Mm. And the mm. big green egg there. Looks good for about an hour, he said, till the bacon was nice and crisp around there. My favorite uh, stuffed jalapeno is uh, pineapple cream cheese and crawfish. Ooh, man, that's good stuff right there. I'm going to try that. And then finally, this uh, David Nairns did a whole bunch of little montage of pictures there. And uh, for his New Year's Eve 2011, <laughs> Nut wrote us a nice little letter and uh, did a bunch of different things on the grill. A lot of beef for him. As he says, uh, ladies in the house wanted to meet medium well, a ribeye roast. And he said he also purchased the Weber Rotisserie That's Ring awesome. Kit. And uh, Happy New Year's to everybody. Here's to a great 2000. And 12, here we are, 2012, already, man. How about a secret ingredient here today? The secret ingredient today is pickle juice. And I think this was something new for both of us, but... I would have I, never thought pickle juice was a I I've heard a of it somewhere, ingredient. but haven't really tried it until now. Before the show, I got one of these center-cut pork chops. Wait, i got to get gloves for this. This will be a glove deal because I'm not digging down in the pickle juice barehanded. Yeah. I'm smarter than that sometimes. Use the tongs. Uh, I don't see tongs on the table anyway. So we'll use our fingers, but we will glove up for safety. So here's the pork chop before. We use a boneless boneless pork chop, center cut pork chop. We put it in some pickled juice. And I and cannot say this is going to be good because look at that. It looks like it's cooked already. Vinegar and uh, there's a lot of spices in there. Um, basically, what you did with this pork chop bill is ceviched it. And uh, if anybody knows about ceviche and what it is all about, is all about using acids to cook seafood, usually. Uh, the Greeks, the Spanish, and uh, the Italians all take their seafood, put drop it in, Mexicans too, drop it in um, uh, acid, usually lemon juice or pickle juice or something like that, and they um, go ahead and... Uh, cook it using the acids in the vinegar or lemon juice or whatever it is that they use. Recipe I got said, we'll put yeah, the other one in there. Let it marinate for a hour, couple hours. And so you got the recipe from a reputable reputable book? I no, have? I just no. found something off the internet. Internet. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Salt and pepper it afterwards, which we didn't do. And uh, I figured it's probably going to have some salt in it. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to uh, we're gonna go ahead and cook that pork chop up and we'll let you know how it tastes. Good show here. This It'll week. be wonderful. The pickle pork chop. The pickle, pickle pork, pork chop. chop. Um, that's all we got here this week. Uh, more fun next week. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Give it the thumbs up or go to Facebook and like us there as well. Hey, remember uh, in the world we live in today, it is getting absolutely crazy out there. So, hey, buy local, think global, stay sustainable, and for God's sakes, hug your mama. <laughs>